This video deals with uh, two di different topics. First of all, uh, number one, first finding the prime factorization of a positive integer. We're going to do that using uh, what are called something called factor trees. And a little bit later on, the second thing we're going to look at is finding the greatest common factor of a of a polynomial, either a binomial or a trinomial, and factoring that uh, polynomial by using the greatest common factor. All right, let's first start with um, how do we find, how do we do a factor tree? Uh, how do we create, find the prime numbers that go into a given number? In this example, we have 48. We're starting with the number 48. And it doesn't really matter what two numbers you choose, what two divisors of 48 you choose. I chose 8 and 6. And since neither of those are prime, prime numbers, we're going to keep on going. You recall prime numbers are numbers such as 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, etc. And these are numbers that have only two factors, one and itself, no other factors. So what we're looking for is all prime numbers in terms of our factors that we're looking for. Notice the number 6. The number 6 can be broken up into 3 times 2. Those are Each one of those are prime. That means we're done. Those are the ends of the branches. That's what I mean. The ends of the branches, the bottom, the last factors. The number 8 over here on the left is 4 times 2. 2 is done because 2 is a prime number. 4 becomes 2 times 2, and, that, and therefore each one of these are prime, so we're done. So we can really rewrite this as the following. And so I can write this as, uh, t uh, since there are four twos, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, or we can write that with an exponent. Since there are four twos, we can write that as 2 to the 4 times 3. That is called the prime factorization of 48. And there is only one answer. There is only one answer. You could have written 3 times 2 to the 4th, but meanwhile, um, the only primes used there, again, are just 2 and 3. Moving down to another example, <clears throat> starting with the number 24, this is just to show you it doesn't matter whether you use 8 and 3, 6 and 4, or 2 and 12. The very bottom of the branches, you still wind up with three factors of 2 and a 3. No matter where, how we uh, uh, wind up with our factors at the bottom of the tree, the branches of the tree, we wind up with a, a single 3 and two and uh, three twos, okay? So, which is really goes to show you um, any two factors of a number can be broken down into the factor tree. So now we know how to find the, the prime factorization of the number using a factor tree. Now let's find the greatest common factor between two numbers. This is our next step in our factoring process. And what I've done is I've taken the numbers 48 and 24, and I've written out their prime factorizations here and here. And then I've used this technique <clears throat> using two circles. It's called a Venn diagram. We're not going to use this for very long, but I just want to show you uh, what it's all about. You notice that, that um, there are some factors that are in common. For example, you see this, this factor of 2? It's in the first number, 48. It's in the second number, 24. Then it, again, it happens again. It's in common. The two is in common. And once more, 2 is a factor of 24. 2 is a factor of what? Of, I'm sorry, 48 and also 24. This last two, though, is not in, it, it's not in common. It's not a common factor, so we leave it out. Okay? So I put the three twos here, 1, 2, 2, 2, and third 2. That means there are three pairs of common factors of 2. Okay? And also notice the 3 is right here. It's, com it's also a common factor. So I put the 3 right here. And that's in between, right in the middle of the two circles. Those are the common factors. Notice that there was a 2 right here that was a factor of 48 that, that wasn't a common factor. And notice that every factor of 24, every factor of 24 lies in here. 
in between the two circles. Okay, so those are all parts of the common factor. So what we wind up with, look inside the the center intersection of the two circles, we wind up with two times two times two times three, which is twenty-four. So twenty-four is the greatest common factor. Just to check it, twenty-four goes into forty-eight. Yes, it does. Two times, twenty-four goes into twenty-four once, and it should be the largest number. That's a factor of 24, and is also a factor of 48. So, greatest common factor. Another example of greatest common factor, two numbers of 72 and 1,200. Okay, I'm, I have my factor tree. Uh, sorry, I didn't do my factor tree, but I have the prime factors from the factor tree for both numbers. Okay, notice that this 2 and this 2 are common. I'll put a little dot here. Okay. Uh, this the second 2. Yes, another one. Third one. Yes, there's the third one right there. Okay. And now we have 3s. Okay, so this 3 is common with this 3 here, and it's right here. Put it right there. So those are all the common factors. And what factors are left? Well, there's a 3, which goes right down here, which is not common. And then we have two 5s, which we'll put here and here, and a 2, which we also know wasn't common. Okay. So how do we write out? So the GCF is what? Well, it turns out to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, which turns out to be 24. That's the largest number. That's a factor of 72 and also 1,200. Okay. If you check with your calculator, you see that 24 goes into both of those numbers. And yes, that is the greatest common factor. Okay, let's take a look at the next step in this process. Let's take a look at two um, monomials that have not only numerical coefficients, but also uh, variable factors. And the nice thing about variables that are in this form is that there's nothing that you have to do. They're already in factored form, which is very, very nice. So I do my prime factorization for the number, and I get this, 237, x times y to the third power. And 56 is this one right here, 2227, x squared, y. Well, you know, we could do these two circles, but I think we're, we're getting sophisticated enough to know how to get the greatest common factor. And instead of putting them in the, in the middle here, what we're going to do is simply do the, this. We're going to say, okay, 2 is here, 2 is here, and go to the, just simply write down a single 2 right here. See? 7 is here, 7 is here, and we bring the 7 down. X is a factor here one time, right? X to the first power, right? Whoops. X is a factor here two times. So what should I pick? Okay. It, X should, is really only a factor one time. X is, X is a common factor only one time. How about Y? How many times is Y a factor here? Three times. Y times Y times Y over here. Y is a factor one time, so what, what would I pick? The largest number of times that Y is a common factor, again, is one time. So really, my greatest common factor is 2 times 7 times X times Y, which is 14XY. Not too bad. Pretty straightforward. 